Hello fellow woodworkers and welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop 10 Minute Tool Review. It's finally here in the workshop, the tool that I've been waiting to buy and the tool that I've been waiting to review. But will the Parkside lathe live up to my expectations? Let's find out. <music> So this is the infamous or famous, depending on how you look at it, Parkside lathe. It is the model PDM 600 B2. YouTube is absolutely swarmed with videos about this lathe. And I just wanna say before I start this tool review, I am not a professional wood turner, nor do I wanna be a professional wood turner. The reason that I brought this lathe is very much to use it as a hobby stroke enthusiast, but Having said that, there are lots and lots of places on the internet where you can see people that have made some quite fantastic pieces of wood using this lathe, and there's a lot of people that think it was a complete waste of money. So let's unbox it and see what it's like. Okay, so let's have a look what's in the actual uh, box. <clears throat> I've been very excited for this. I know it sounds a bit silly, but um, I've always wanted to have a lathe. And when I saw the videos on YouTube for this product, I thought it was only a matter of time before it came back again, which luckily it has done. So, so we have a uh, box which I think, uh, from the other videos I've seen, is the are the uh, tools. We've got uh, a cap. Put those there. Uh, we've got the uh, ring that you actually uh, use to attach uh, material to the lathe. It feels, it's sort of brushed aluminium I think, it doesn't feel like steel, uh, it's not very heavy. And what else have we got? Got a bit of polystyrene. Uh, I think this is going to have to all come out in one go by the look of it. Okay, so on the other side we've got the uh, piece of metal that you uh, hold the tools against. Not quite sure what the name is for that. And there is um, the actual lathe. Now, and the instruction manual. Straight away, um, I can just see. In the bottom of the box there, we've got a bit of broken plastic. Uh, yeah, there's a piece of smashed off um, plastic here. Uh, it looks like it's from the edge. I don't know if you can um, see that, but it's obviously uh, broken off of somewhere. Let's finish unpacking and see if we can find out where it's come from. Ah, there's a bit on the, there it is. So, there's um, a broken off part. Oh, let me turn it around so you can see it. So, I'm not sure if you can see that, hopefully you can. Uh, a little bit of the black plastic has broken off uh, the end there, but seeing as A, it's really difficult to get, and B, um, I should just be able to glue that back on. Uh, I don't see that being a problem really. So. Uh, this is the unit. Uh, we've got the uh, motor on this side and it says um, it's a 550 watt mo motor um, and it also says it has a spin speed of a minimum of 8,000 and a maximum of 3,000. I'm going to say straight away um, I'm surprised it's not a bit heavier. It, it feels very light. This obviously um, this rail at the bottom, which is the main uh, rail that holds it together, feels like, um, definitely feels to me like it's um, uh, aluminium. And I know on more expensive uh, lathes, obviously that metal is made from something other than aluminium. And not a huge amount in the box, but to be honest, you know, it's a lathe. There's not a massive amount you can get it. Inside the bag, the um, instruction booklet, it's quite a big instruction booklet. And there are two um, spanners. And from the videos I've seen, uh, these are the spanners that you use here to hold and 
tighten uh, when you're doing the lathe up. So um, really, really uh, basic amount in the pack. Uh, let's have a look at the instruction uh, book. And as is common with a lot of the uh, Parkside brand ones, uh, it's in numerous uh, different languages. There's quite actually quite a lot of um, information in it. And whether I don't know if you know this or uh, not, there's a nice technical uh, diagram there. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, and I only know because I've done a little bit of research that the actual unit is made by uh, Shepak, Shepak, however you say it, um, who make a lot of the um, Aldi workforce uh, tools and make a lot of the Parkside ones. So it's actually a Shipak uh, unit, not an Aldi one. So let's have a look in the box at, I'm going to say these are chisels, but I'm sure that's not the right name. If you do know the correct name, pop it in the comments uh, box. But these, uh, there should be two in here. Oh, yes, very sharp they are as well. Um, wooden handled feel quite nice um, and the two different um, shaping chisels at the top not very long uh, obviously most of it's the handle which I sort of know it has to be that way but I would have expected them to be a little uh, longer but I can tell you something that is very sharp having just uh, whacked it against my hand so that's what we've got um, we've got the screws I think these are m8 uh, screws and these are for screwing in here uh, when you attach a piece of wood to it so everything laid out let's have a look at the instruction manual and see how we put it together okay so like many of these units um it's a fairly fairly uh, basic affair so on this side um <clears throat> you've got the uh unit that's sort of the end bit that clamps it i'm not sure what the correct name is and it's just got a sliding lever on both sides there's some instructions on the top that says how to unlock it and how to lock it but essentially if you pull the lever towards you it loosens uh, this part and it can slide up and down depending on uh, the width of the wood first thing I'm gonna say and I know I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I know this was a very cheap piece of kit but even so you know it slides nicely in the rail but there is a lot of play in that and I don't think it's gonna matter uh, too much but there is a lot of play in it more than probably you would like when you've got it into the correct position, you just move that arrow into the center and it locks it in place. Uh, also on the sides, there are um, eight holes and having read the instructions, actually that's what these are for. Uh, they are to screw it down so that you um, fix it permanently to a bench. You don't have to do that and I've seen quite a lot of uh, YouTube videos where these are just clamped on uh, to a bench then it's not actually screwed through and certainly for me I'm not going to have this out because I'm not going to be using it all the time so I will either clamp it or I'll put a wooden board that I can clamp underneath it and do it that way so that's it this is the um, tool support and at the end you'll see uh, you, hopefully you can see there's a little black bit there and this is the uh, handle for that it, this is actually completely rock solid and it won't move so I'm presuming the reason for that is this needs to be attached and it needs to be uh, unscrewed so there's just a little screw in it um, I'm just gonna undo it the other thing is um, I'm not gonna lie some of this uh, plastic feels very um, I don't know if it's unfair to say uh, cheap but it certainly doesn't feel like there's a huge amount of quality to it um, actually I think I picked a screwdriver that's too big as well uh, there, I don't think there's a there's a huge amount of quality uh, to the plastic it does feel very almost sort of brittle like it could break at any uh, point I'm sure that's unfair but I do know from a lot of the research that I've done uh, about this product that people tend to custom make um, bits for this uh, lathe I know certainly I think it's on Thingiverse there's quite a lot of uh, options, 3D printed options that you can um, use and make to sort of add to this. So I'm just trying to get the screw out because the screw actually has to come completely out for it to set in. So let's put that on the end uh, there and pop the screw in. It's not, it's not particularly uh, easy to get to that, I have to be honest. Um, now I've got the screw caught in there. This is where having a, a very good magnetised screwdriver comes in handy. 
Okay, that's got it. So in terms of sort of putting it together, that is pretty much it. Uh, that's all you need to do. Um, if you're not fixing it down, then that one screw to put the knob in um, is all you need to do. And I, like I said, I, it doesn't feel massive quality. So I'm just going to be a bit careful uh, doing that up because I don't want to over screw it. Now, you should be able to undo this, it says. Yeah. And when you do, then the tool support just runs freely. And obviously, I'm at the back of this unit. This is the front that you're... Uh, looking at and then there's just another side bolt there that comes out and the tool support just pops in like so and then you do it up and obviously you have the material here now in terms of this side um, there are two sort of bolts here hence the reason that you've got two spanners there's like an inner bolt um, which you attach the um, mechanism to now I think I'm pretty sure these two spanners are the same size. They feel it, but once you've got it on the inside, then you use the other one to simply undo it. That, that was very loose. Um, and then this bolt comes off when you're not uh, using it. So this is if you've got a piece of smaller or uh, thinner wood that you attach it to, that goes directly straight into the wood. But if you're using this for bigger aperture, bigger pieces of wood, then that screws straight on to there like so and obviously it's angled so you can tighten it up uh, with this but for this demonstration I think we'll stick to uh, the one that it came with so that's pretty much it in terms of uh, putting it together um, what we're going to do what I'm going to do now of course being a 10 minute uh, tool work review sorry um, we're going to have a test of the uh, sound and see how loud this gets up to so let's do that now Okay, so I've got my uh, sound meter and it's 10 centimetres away from the main unit. I've plugged it in. I think we're all ready to go. So let's see how loud it gets. And we'll start on the lowest setting first, which is 800. Okay, that's giving me a reading of 65. Let's move it up to 1200. About 68, 69. 1600. About the same. Two thousand two hundred. And top speed three thousand. So, uh, to be fair, that didn't really get any louder from about 2,200 to 3,000. It might have sounded louder to you, but from the uh, reading on the sound meter, it didn't really, it didn't get above 70 the whole way through, which is really quite um, quiet for at all. So, I'm desperate to put a piece of wood on this and test it out. I've never used a lathe before, so this could well be a disaster, but I've been waiting for this moment for so long, I just want to have a go. So let's hook it up and see what it's like. Okay, so I've got a, a log, um, which has still got bark on it, which I think is probably about the right size. It's probably a good um, size to start with, and I'm just going to attach it. Having uh, screwed that on, I just need to make sure that this end is uh, properly tightened up, which I'm going to do now. Move that out of the way so you can see a bit better. And for this, I probably could have used that uh, the ring adapter, but the log I've got is just a little bit um, too small for it. Okay, that's not going to be um, any tighter. 
So let's move that along and get the log. Now, when you get to uh, this point here, there's actually a threaded uh, screw in here that sort of does it, pushes it on all the way. So let's lock that off. And as you can see, it's spindling there uh, now quite nicely. But here, you attention, this is like a tensioner. So you put it in. Hold that bolt there. Okay, you can probably see now um, it's just tightening. It's, it's in there tight enough. I wouldn't want it any sort of tighter than that. So let's do this bolt up to stop that screw, that thread from turning. Okay, just give it a quick go, turn it on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just pivot this around and clamp it to the bench just for safety's sake and then we can get going. Okay, uh, so a couple of things that you can see uh, straight away. I don't think I picked the best uh, piece of equipment, <laughs> best log for this. Uh, it has taken some of it off, but two very important things. Uh, this, the tool rest, has moved. I did that up super, super tight uh, before we started and it's worked itself loose. I think a lot of this is probably down uh, to the way I'm using it and particularly I'm not quite sure the best way to hold it. When I've looked on YouTube videos people seem to hold it like that but as you can see there's quite a big gap and the other thing is this has come unlocked. I locked that in place and during the use it's come completely unlocked. And actually, when I was using it, I could feel quite a lot of uh, play in it. And I could see it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It sort of vibrated and put itself loose. The other thing is I haven't had it very high yet. So I'm going to have a go and just see what the other tool is like and see if I get any better joy from that. Okay, uh, as you can see, uh, there's still quite a little bark on it, um, but I have managed to make uh, some grooves in it, and I've actually got a lot of the bark off, which um, I'm really pleased about. Again, I think a lot of this is just down to my inexperience, and I'm going to watch a lot more YouTube videos before I use it properly, but it was definitely better. But the other thing you saw is obviously the power cut out quite a bit uh, when I was actually going it. So I'll just give it one more little go and uh, then we'll have the final review. The other way to use this is to uh, loosen this off like so. And then this uh, pivots round. You have to take that plastic bit off the end. 
but this pivots round for when you're using this bit. So when this bit is in the end of the piece of wood and it's attached there, then you can hollow um, the inside out by putting the uh, blade guard at the end. So that tool guide guard goes like that. And then you can use it to hollow out the inside. So if you're making a bowl or something like that, I haven't actually done that, but again, I've seen that on uh, YouTube. So that's the other use for it. Okay, so what is my final verdict of the Parkside lathe? Now, as you can see, uh, not perfect by any means, but I think that's down to the wood that I picked. I'm not a massive, massive fan of lathing, as in I haven't seen hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos, but I've seen enough on the park side to just get going, but I do think I probably picked the wrong piece of wood. The other thing is, I think my technique is pretty appalling, but I've got plenty of time to learn. I haven't bought this because I'm going to start manhandling large forests of wood and chunking out bowls left, right and centre or making a lot of spoons. That's not what it's for. It's for occasional wood turning projects, which is exactly how I'm going to use it. So in that respect, it does exactly what I want it to do, which is occasional wood turning products. There are just a few things that I would like to point out though. And normally I give fantastic reviews on Parkside Tools, you know that, but the unit does feel very, very underpowered. Even with my novice inexperienced skills, you'll see in the video, there's a few times where it stopped or it came close to stopping. Now, that's probably because I was pressing too hard or I had the tool at the wrong angle. It could well be that, but it does give you a little bit of a feeling of being slightly underpowered. The second thing is, I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't feel tremendously well made, which is unusual for a Parkside uh, product. It just feels a bit cheap and maybe a bit lightweight. So I think if I'm gonna get a proper amount of use out of it, the one thing I'm gonna do is put it on a real solid piece of wood that potentially I could screw down to a workbench because it does feel a little bit solid. It's only a very small uh, motor in there. I mean, it's not gonna produce a huge amount of power. It's only a 550 watt motor, but I think it would be helpful if it had a bit of added strength. Now, since I uh, redid the uh, clasp on the end to keep it together, you would have seen that last video, it didn't move, but it does just give a little bit of an impression that a lot of use and it can sort of wobble around a bit. So overall, um, is it what I hoped it would be? I'm gonna say probably not, but my expectations were far, far too high. I expected to, you know, to be able to get a piece of wood and wood turn it, and before you know it, I'd have a, you know, an ancient 18th century cup or something. It was never gonna be that way. Is it good enough for the money? Without a doubt, a resounding yes. For the amount of money I paid for this, £59.99, that's nothing. And as an entry level into wood lathing or lathing, I think it's perfect. And as I said, there's loads of places on the internet where you can see some fantastic things made. And I'll put a link in the description to the guy's videos that I uh, used. I can't remember now uh, what his name was, but he's made some fantastic things on this exact same product. So overall value for money, that's a big yes for me because I want an entry level lathe and it gives me that. Is it gonna be something you can use a lot? I'm gonna be honest and say no. I don't think the build quality is good enough to sustain really big or really complex projects, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It's what you want to use it for. For me, it matches my needs and fits it perfectly. You might want more than this is able to give you, but as I said, one of the key things for me is, this is gonna give me enough power and enough oomph to decide if I want to invest in a bigger, better lathe, which one day I might do. But for now, it's gonna do me exactly as I want it to. Thank you so much uh, for watching this 10 minute uh, tool review. If you are a regular um, viewer and subscriber, can I just please say a massive thank you. At the time of making this video, I think I've got 325 subscribers, which is 324 more than I thought I was gonna get. So a really big thank you for your continued support. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. Don't forget to like and comment. I listen to, I read, sorry, I read all of your comments and I reply to them all and your feedback means a lot to me. I hope you found this video useful and I hope it helps you make your decision. I'm just gonna say to you, it's now uh, the 15th of March, 2022, and there are still Lidl's that have got these lathes in stock. So if you're watching this any time around then and you want to go and get it, there are still places you can pick them up. The Lidl that's up the road for me, not the one I bought this in, the other one, there's six of them still in there. So go and grab yourself a bargain if it's for you. Thank you so much, I'll see you next week. 
Happy Woodworking, 